Welcome to Manicon 2013. My name is Bailey Mosley, and I'm here with all my new friends I've met here this year. We're going to take you on the behind the scenes tour of all the fun things that go inside Manicon. So stay tuned. There's a lot more excitement in store. Right, gang? Yeah! My name is Naomi Raffi and I'm a volunteer. Hi, I'm Maggie Lachiva and I'm a volunteer. Hi, I'm Megan Robinson. I'm a staff member. It's a really creative event and it reaches out to teens and kids and it's, it's fantastic. It's fun. Um, I just really like that it, we can make a smaller convention in town instead of having a, to go to a big one. It's really good for the library because it reaches out to the young adult community and we're really happy to have them come to the library and experience this with us. Um, I think the events like this are really important because we can bring the community together and it makes like something unique about the community instead of just everyone on their own. I have to agree with her and also it brings in a lot of the kids to come into the library when usually they, they don't. but. Yeah, it's definitely a big outreach initiative for the community, um, trying to get kids in the library, um, try to promote literacy um, through graphic novels and anime and all that stuff. Uh, my name is Steve Porter. I'm originally from Washington State. I transferred down here about seven weeks ago to be uh, with the BBC uh, Mandalorian Mercs. Uh, I am dressed up as a Star Wars Mandalorian Merc. My character's name is Eulotus Vipera. We're here to help promote the Star Wars Read Day. One of the things I think is important about this is, you know, first of all, just getting kids to read. I mean, nowadays you don't you get, see kids who are more stuck on playing video games. Uh, than actually reading. I remember, you know, reading growing up, reading my Star Wars books, and to me, I was able to just get away, and it helped me relax a lot more. Where with video games, even you know, even the video games I play, by the time I'm done with them, I'm a little, I'm not relaxed. I'm more pent up, and you know, so I think you know, having a Star Wars read day to help people read is a lot better. Um, one of the things I really enjoy is, you know. When you have a little kid who sees you dressed up and they just run up and want to get your picture taken with, that is one of the best feelings about it. You know, we do a lot of charity works, you know, to help, you know, people around the, you know, around the country. Uh, we help donate to the, uh, some of the Sandy Hook survivors. Uh, we, and I, I believe we also did the, uh, help donate some money to the Oklahoma uh, disaster, you know, that they had just a few months ago. Well, I had uh, my friend Phil and uh, John, who uh, is our rush lawyer, and the uh, for the Mandalorian Mercs, helped me on it. Um, what it is is um, the helmet 
uh, you know, the, the helmet's horns are actually uh, fiberglass. Uh, we set them, we uh, made the fiberglass uh, and put them on the, uh, the helmet. I'll, we call them buckets. Um, the uh, plates on, on my chest plates and my cod piece are, are uh, made out of Sentra, um, we, which is a hybrid of um, plastic and styrofoam. We cut them out, uh, shape them, and then we just kind of paint them. Um, you, you know, the soft parts, I actually had a seam just do the, uh, uh, the vest, so, because I can't sew with a crap. <laughs> um, and the gauntlets are, was done by a friend of mine named Phil, who uh, is just an amazing fiberglass uh, person. Here at Manicon, we found insane costumes. What exactly are you dressed up as today? So we are from three different Star Wars groups. We have the Mandalorian Mercs, the 501st, and the Rebel Legion. So we are Mandalorians, and then we have a Stormtrooper behind us. Upstairs for Star Wars Reads Days, there's Jedis, there's uh, Juno Eclipses here. There's all different sorts of folks up there volunteering. And you have a speaker hooked up and everything. How long did it take you to make this costume? I do. Um, these costumes really are labors of love, and people will put thousands of hours in them just to be able to go out and volunteer and bring a little bit of magic to people every day. And why do you think it's so important that you actually put time into the costumes and to show up to these events? I think a lot of us are equally really, really into the movies and the culture, but also really into just doing a good job and doing the best that we can. It's really like an art form. And what kind of reactions have you been getting from the kids around here? They really love it. I think the best part of this is just having kids just, just their eyes get wide and they get so excited. So it's so much fun to be here. Well, you guys look incredible. Thank you so much for your time and hope you guys have an awesome time today at Manicon. We're here with Brett and his family, who they have both made their own costumes. Um, what kind of effort and time did you put into his costume? Well, his costume, we uh, started with uh, a costume maker who actually made the robe. And we spent time building things like his blaster out of parts from home to make it look as screen accurate as possible and customizing some of the other parts, such as the light up eyes. And how did he even get involved in um, Manicon and how, why is it so important to the community to have these? A couple years before he was born, I made my first Star Wars costume, and I wore it at an event like this, and I had so much fun doing it that as my kids got older, I started introducing that to them, and it gives them a chance to kind of get out and show off their costume and just have some fun pretending to be uh, whoever they want to be. Well, the costume looks incredible. As far as like an educational component, um, how has this helped him in learning or reading or creativity even? Well, you know, when he discovers he has a love for something, uh, for Star Wars example, uh, it's been easy to buy him books, comic books, magazines, things like that, that uh, he really enjoys reading. And so as long as he's enjoying it, it's promoting him to read. So we think it's a great thing. And you know, I think anytime you encourage a kid's creativity, it's going to encourage them to explore and create stories and things like that. So I think all in all, it's always a good thing. my two favorite Jedis, Jeff and Brian. They were helping out with the Star Wars Reads program. Um, go ahead and tell me about that. 
Well, this is my second year working with the Star Wars Reads program here at Manicon. Uh, each year we have a Jedi training academy with the goal of trying to strengthen our numbers and find those that are force sensitive to join our side. And how have the kids been reacting to the Reads program? The kids have been fantastic. They just get so excited with the Jedi Reads program and Star Wars Day and they can't wait to go through the academy and get certified as a Jedi Padawan themselves. <laughs> and both of you are certified Jedis, correct? That is correct. That is correct, that is correct yes. <laughs> Alrighty, well thank you so much and may the Force be with you. And may the Force be with you. <laughs> may the Force be with you too. <laughs> We're here with Chris O'Haran, who made all of this possible for all the youth to come together and do Manicon. So what type of youth services have you sponsored before here? Um, we do a lot of different programs, and by youth services we say from age zero up through age 18. And um, we do all kinds of programs, starting with uh, story times for the youngest children, then we have book clubs and a culture club for, uh, for kids, children of elementary school age. And then for teens, we have uh, everything from craft and art classes to events like this, which really you know, brings out the kids who are into uh, comic booking and, uh, and Star Wars and things like that. And why do you think it's so important to keep the kids involved in this sort of activities in the community? Well, we like to show them uh, what the library is all about and that we have a lot of uh, different fantastic things to offer them, um, including books, of course, and things like that, because this all stems, of course, from comic books. But um, we like to just show them that the library is a, a fun place to be with a lot of different activities for everyone. Well, there definitely is a lot of activities here today. So thank you so much for everything you do, and thank you for the short little interview well, thank, we had. Thank you for coming. My name is Gretchen Von Clote, and this is my husband Tim Von Clote, and we are Sugar Rush Custom Confessions, and we're here to uh, give some sweet treats and get some energy to the kids. I think it's very important for kids to have a place to go where it's safe and they can have fun and be themselves without being mocked or bullied or anything like that. I think it's important for all kids to be creative in every aspect of their life, and this just happens to be one uh, popular sort of cultural event that happens that helps these kids harness their creativity? Um, I am a pastry chef. I've been doing this about 10 years and so today we have some cupcakes and I made cake pops and chocolate chip cookies for the kids and I priced them really low for them too so that it was affordable for them. They can find me on Facebook, uh, Sugar Rush Custom Confections. Okay, I'm Maggie Ilachiva, and we are helping kids make candy sushi. Well, many of the other conventions did this already. It's just this is our first time we're doing it here. 
and so um, Erica, she just came up with it. The process is you first go to this table and you choose which kind of sushi you want to make. You can either put one on top or you can roll it up. And then you just go through the line and then we send you to the other tables um, so you can learn how to make them. And then you can take them home if you want. It just gets to everyone and it's just cool to like learn how to make something that's simple. It's going, turning out much bigger than we expected it to. Um, I'm Pikachu from Pokemon. Um, I'm Totoro from My Neighbor Totoro. I'm Miku Hatsune from Vocaloid. I went to Manicon last year and I found it was really fun. And I go to cons regularly and this one was just really close to home. Well, it's kind of interesting to see everyone dressed up in the costumes and all the things that people come up with because it's just a really creative event. Um, I would tell them that it's a good experience and it's like a great thing to learn from. You get to learn cool costuming techniques and stuff like that. Um, it's also a really good way to express yourself, I would say. I think um, today a lot of kids are afraid to express that they like anime or video games because it might make them like a nerd. But I think it's okay to just go for it and be confident in yourself. What about you? Um, yeah, what Christina said, I also think that it's a very good way for kids to find people who are interested in what they're interested in. So if you go to an event like this, you could find a ton of people who like things that you like that you might not find in school or around your neighborhood. I am Jay Hollenbaugh. I go to MSA and I'm here because I love anime. I'm Jalissa Florenciani and I'm here from MSA and I come I came here last year and I love to do this because I love cosplaying and everything, so yeah. My name's Annie Ross. I, I, I came here because I saw the flyer at the library and I thought that this would be a really, really cool experience. I, I dressed up as Link because I, I I started playing Zelda a lot, and I um, figured I have the hair, so I'm just all like, wow, I could totally pull that off, so, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm dressed up as Len Kagamine, he's a Vocaloid, and I did it because it's her dream to cosplay, <laughs> so I decided to help her with her dream. I'm dressed up as Rin Kagamine, and I found th these two on YouTube, and I really love their songs, so I decided to play as them. I think it's important because you get to go out and meet friends who like the same things as you. You can have a good time with complete random strangers and you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> I think it's good because you get to do what you like the best and have fun. with Jonah the Zombie and Jonah what brought you here today? Um, the fact that I love comic conventions and this was a local one and actually was free. And why are events like this so important to you? I find that these things are so important because a lot of, like especially in this age a lot of nerds are kind of looked down upon so coming to these kind of things seeing like people that being able to dress up to how they want to dress up um, outside of Halloween especially kind of lets them know that other people are out there to like show that they are they do like them despite what the world may think. 
And did you come with some of your friends that are into this as well? I was going to, but they had work. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's important to the community because it does give kids a chance to go and do something they would like to do. Um, I know especially on Saturdays, kids don't usually have things to do, so they sit at home playing video games. Um, and there's some, like things like this give them a safe place to come, read, have fun with some other people, and possibly buy some cool things. So, Have you gotten anything so far? I have not, but I plan to by the end of the day. <laughs> what do you plan on buying? Probably some comic books, because I'm running low on some ones I haven't read yet. As you can see, there are many displays here at Manicon. We've got martial arts, which is an important part of expressing a lot of creativity. And we have a lot going on here. Excited to see what else there is. Having this at a library is very important. Why exactly do you think this is so important to have it here rather than anywhere else and it, having Manicon hosted here? It's very important to us to connect the stories, the workmanship of art and literature with the library. If you go off to a school gymnasium, they're having a party at the gym. If you go to the Civic Center, that's nice, they're having an event at the Civic Center. But this is about books, reading, and above all, stories. Whether you enter the story through a movie, a DVD, um, a drawn graphic novel, or a traditional book with words, large print or small, or sound recording, it's all here. This is where you come to get the good stories. Well, thank you for having it here, and thank you for this interview. You are most welcome. Thank you kindly. Lots of amazing costumes today. Right now I stopped these two because their costumes were insane. What are you dressed up as today? I'm Holy Roman Empire from Hitalia. And how about you? I'm Chibi Italy from Hitalia. And what brought you here today to want to come to Manicon? Well, I just really like anime and all the otaku geeky stuff, so I want to come. And also I went last year and it was really awesome. So, it's, yeah. Is living up to your expectations this year as well? Yeah. It's, it looks even like bigger than last year, like there's more stuff to do, like the sushi candy thing. And I guess that we entered the cosplay contest this year because we actually have costumes, so it's, yeah. Awesome. And why do you think it's so important for the community to have events such as this? I think it's important for the community to have events like this because not only does it give teens a thing to do, but it really lets them know that the world does care about all us otaku and geeks out there and it makes us feel loved. Well, I'm sure feeling the love here. I'm really happy I came, and I hope you guys have an awesome time. Thank you. Thank you for your interview. I'm here with Erica today, and she has been helping host this event for the past four years. Um, so Erica, why is this so important that you host this here and that you have this every year? Um, it actually started out and has continued to be through every year that we've done this event. Uh, it's a celebration of art and creativity and imagination. We of course want to get kids and teens into the library and we want to show them 
what a really fun place it can be and how alive with creativity and imagination it can be. Um, so we focus on things like art workshops. You know, we've had the cosplay runway this year and last year. Um, we have all kinds of arts and crafts that the kids are engaged in doing. Um, we've also been doing Star Wars Reads Day the last couple of years, so I don't know if you probably have gotten some footage of amazing um, uh, stormtroopers and Mandalorians and Boba Fetts and all kinds of Star, uh, Star Wars characters are here today. The kids are really excited about that so it's really you know it's a way for us to kind of reach out to the community and for kids and teens to come to the library and just realize whoa I didn't know you could do this at the library I didn't know it was like that and we really want them to see yes it is it is like that and have you seen a lot of growth or popularity throughout the past four years? Absolutely. Um, the first year we had less than 250 people. It was still a pretty big program. It was just in this one big room. Um, and over the years it has grown. Uh, last year we had almost a thousand people. Uh, we're hoping that it actually exceeds that number this year. Um, so absolutely it has definitely become a thing. That's incredible. I really hope you reach your goal this year and thank you for your time. Thank you. We're here with the woman that made this whole thing possible, Sherry Corrier. She is director of Neighborhood Services and just tell us about what all has gone through to have this happen. I will Bailey, but today I'm actually Lois Lane reporting here from the Daily Planet. And while I didn't really make all of it possible, the real, real key people to this are the library staff. Erica Dow, Ava Eady, all of the staff at the library. And this is an absolutely wonderful event. This is the fourth year. We have even more kids than teens, young kids than possible. Uh, my co-worker Superman, oh, sorry, wrong name, is here uh, wandering around. And, um, you know, the library is just started to be really featured in a lot of things in the community. It's one of the great places to be. We have six facilities across the county. So we have programs and services happening every day um, all across the community for all ages, teens, youth, children, adults. So we're just so excited about the resurgence of the library and the uses of the library. And I, I'm just so thrilled to see everyone here and uh, taking part in this great Manicon event. Why do you think it's so important to have the kids here, the youth here at the library rather than having a, a bigger place that holds more people? We talked about that and one of the main things is that the library has so many things to offer and a lot of times we lose kids. They've come to the library with their families when they're little tiny children and then you know when they get older it's not that cool to come here and so this is one of those events where people as you can see come back and be cool and so they're back here at the library and we think if we can keep them more involved over over the years that they'll all the library will always be a good source for them that's awesome and that's actually pretty cool yeah. <laughs> so thank you for your interview and thank you for all you've done for this yeah. event yeah. I'm back with Jedi's Jeff and Brian but they're also involved in another thing here at Manicon could you tell me more about it Yes, one of the other groups we're involved with here is the Manatee Sarasota Kimono Club. It's a group that started in 2010 to promote traditional Japanese attire. And why do you think it's important to bring it here at Manicon? It's important here because not only is it an anime sci-fi con um, convention, it's also for uh, Japanese culture. And since the kimono is an important part of Japanese culture, we wanted to bring kimono to the convention to display. And they're displayed beautifully, but I know the sizes are always an issue. So you know more about the folding, don't you? I actually had a very fortunate um, event when I was in Kyoto, Japan, to stumble into a shop where there were two very nice little old ladies that brought me in and taught me how to do a bunch of the folds. Um, so I actually learned in Kyoto, Japan, how to do a tying. And um, it's not a simple put it on like a bathrobe. There is a lot that goes into it. A lot of the folds, a lot of the, the way that it hangs. Um, it can take hours to put one of these on properly. Did you dress everyone today? Um, myself and Jeff, we put all of the ladies you see here today in their kimonos. They actually were... Um, some of them are uh, 
traditional classical. Some of them are examples of modern homemade so that we could display um, all sorts of different uh, varieties of kimono today. That is incredible. You ladies look beautiful and the robes look beautiful. And thank you guys so much for your interview and for your time. And I'll let you guys go back to wearing your many different hats. <laughs> thank you for having us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lori Thomas. I'm known as Citria Online, C-E-T-R-I-Y-A. It started around seventh grade in the typical anime club, and we were trying to make our own stories, but no one wanted to draw, so I sat there and I said, I'm gonna do it myself, but that's what started me to draw, start drawing, and um, ever since then, I basically just practice. Um, it's, uh, it does take time. It is a long road. Um, there was many false starts with me and even now you're constantly reinventing yourself and that just to know that that's going to happen and that's it's okay. Even if you see someone better than you, they might be younger and they're better than you, they might be older and they're grandmasters, just know that it took them years to get to that point. They didn't just wake up one morning and have gorgeous, wonderful talent. Talent. It just takes work. So just be patient with it. You're gonna get there. Uh, it's important to expose your work at anime, manga cons, comic cons, uh, mostly for feedback because a lot of times we're introverts and we stay in one room drawing for ourselves and you need to have that experience with talking to other people to understand where they're coming from and it'll inspire you and ex um, expand your work and your set of influences and when you get feedback you'll have a better direction of where you're going instead of just you know throwing the bullet and hope it sticks somewhere. Obviously, I'm looking forward to the cosplay contest. Definitely the cosplay runway. I came here to go to the cosplay runway thing. The contest. Definitely the contest. <laughs> Looking forward, really hoping you win this time. Um, I'm not really uh, here to win. I just kind of came here and somebody said, oh, join this. And I said, I will. Um, I like it because I think it's a great way to give thanks to the characters that I look up to. I have been having a ton of fun. It's the best place I've been ever. Who was your favorite so far that you saw on stage? Oh my gosh, they had so many favorites. They're all really good, to be completely honest. Um.
as you can tell, I had a pretty amazing time here at Manicon. Thank you to all the kids that helped out and came and made this thing possible. And thanks to all the librarian staffs that came together and made this all happen for all these kids. Thank you for tuning in and have a great one.